So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Teresa, and today I'm going to talk about Mplot, uh, which I made, if that wasn't obvious from the color scheme. Um, <laughs> uh, it might as well have been titled like Teresa and a Thousand API Proposals, because it's sort of just the story of how I went from not knowing anything about API design to like more about API design. Uh, <laughs> So uh, it started almost exactly a year ago, uh, where I was offered a job where they were like, we need to rewrite the entire front end, and uh, you get to decide how that's done. And I'm like pretty sold on Elm, so I'm like, hmm, interesting. Um, but I'm sort of checking out whether it's at all viable to write this application in Elm, and I go in and check, there's all these plots, and I'm like, oh, no worries, we'll just find a plotting library. Uh, we'll go in on like Elm package and like I'm searching and I was like sure isn't a lot of Elm of <laughs> plotting libraries here um, And so I end up on this thread uh, on Elm discuss where they're talking about like ports to d3 and I'm like <gasps> the disgrace <laughs> And uh, Evan has also been like you know like all sassy about it, like you just do it and um I'm like, okay, well, there's a problem here. Someone's got to build a plotting library. Um, but like, I don't have any real experience in Elm, and I don't know anything about SVG, and don't know anything about data visualization in general. So like, sounds like I'm the woman for the job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so I just start working on it, and it's worth mentioning that I, this is my first open source project ever and I don't know anything about API design. So I'm just like, well, we definitely need like the height and the width, and someone's got to tell me something about some series, and uh, they need colors for now. And uh, obviously, I haven't seen Impossible States Made Impossible by Richard Feldman, <laughs> because this is like, I don't even know. It just burns my eyes now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, what I'm more concerned with at this point is like the user experience. like when. There's all these properties that you have to fill in. Like, shouldn't they be like in some sort of default configuration or something? And like, like what if, what happens when there's more properties? Like, it's gonna be a mess. So I'm like, what would be the ideal experience for the user? And this idea is born in me. Like, wouldn't it be cool if it looked just like HTML? And so like, because it sort of has the same properties. You know, like. It's, it's just a view, and you have these elements, and you can just add the properties on it. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, I give you a bucket of attributes, and then you can just embellish your plot. Um, so I go for that for a while. And uh, it's pretty easy, because you just have these configurations, and just wrap them in a union type, and just build it. Like, you have the first element, this the, con the attributes, and the second one is the elements, and then the way you have the configuration is you just have to as like a type alias and you add some attributes which just like work with that or like set that particular attribute and I'm happy with this. I'm like really happy with this actually. I'm like dancing in my office, being having a good time, I got what I want. Uh, <laughs> but like I'm also a little concerned because I haven't seen this approach anywhere and like either that means like this is a great idea, or it's like a really bad idea. <laughs> and um, so uh, I'm pretty excited about this, also because I realized that Richard Feldman is coming to Vienna, which is not where I'm from, but I go there sometime. Uh, and like, I'm really excited about this. Not maybe that makes sense considering how many other events there is in my calendar. Uh, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but primarily because I have these questions about API design. And uh, I figured, like, he's got to be able to tell me something here. And so uh, I end up, and I talked to Richard about, like, like I showed him, present him these two APIs that we deal with. And um, he's like, well, this one is, like, more expressive, which is nice. And this one is, like, it has this potential for subtle bugs that you can, like, add two of the same attribute, and then you don't know, and it's like, ah. Um, but, like, that's why he leaves me. And like, I'm like, what? Like, you don't, <laughs> you don't have an answer for me? Like, I have to think for myself now and make like judgments based on the compromises and just, I'm like only been programming Elm for like two months or something. Like, 
am I going to make this like definite choice for everyone now? Um, and but like that's that's kind of okay in the end because like independent thinking may lead to like terrible ideas, but it always leads to the education of some sort. So I deal with it like oh yeah, why would you do that to me? <laughs> um, and so. I'm hanging out with a bunch. I just kind of go for like the second approach because I sort of what I take from my, Richard's answers is just like okay, none of them are like balanced,ly terrible, else he would have told me. And so I'm hanging out with this JavaScript conference with like a bunch of like big open source people, and they all have like a million packages on npm, and they're just like I'm showing them my stuff, and they get all excited about it, and they're like ship it. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, it's not done. And uh, they're just like, ship it. I was like, what? Um, and so, like, I'm assuming that they know more about. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. I assume that they know. <laughs> I'm just going to wait for this. You good? All right, cool. Uh, I just assume that they know more about it than I do, so I'm like, okay, I guess I'm shipping it after I like, clean it up a bit. And so like, people like it, and they're like, we need more features, though. And what I hear is like, they need more features. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I'm just kind of accepting that this is my life now, and uh, I need to... <laughs> And I just need to build more features. And so I have, I sort of realized that the way I've built this stuff up is like not really that great because it, it feels silly by now that I have all these attributes which map like almost directly to SVG, which is like not, it just feels dumb. And also like as the application grows and I have to split it up in modules, then the areas and the lines share a bunch and it gets all messy. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna start all over. And um, I realize that's not viable for a project when it grows at some size. Um, but that's what I do. And I sort of started working out with trying out things with, uh, with APIs that are like closer to the metal regarding like using the native um, attributes for SVG. And, uh, but I'm interrupted in all this because I get hired by Nord Inc. And uh, <laughs> they, they have this. One of the cool things about working there is that we have something called Elm Friday, which is every second week where someone from the engineering team works with Evan and uh, on like whatever, uh, <laughs> and it's typically like open sourcey stuff. So I come to San Francisco and I'm like, let's talk, and uh, <laughs> um, and we sit down and it's like I'm like explaining everything. Oh. I skipped way too much here, okay, sorry, back here. Uh, and uh, I'm sort of showing, okay, we got all the attributes there, all the line configuration here, and Evan is more just like, let's not have any of it. <laughs> and it's all in the floor, and we'll just pick it up as, as we go and like figure out what we need. And uh, that's sort of the next question is like, okay, what do we need? But then, uh, and I'm like, you know, well, we need these lines, we need these areas, and like, you have like a variable amount of axes and like all that. And then, but Evan is like, what do we really need? And I'm like, dude, where are you going? Like, <laughs> and um, what happens? We take a look at the current API, and we're like, okay, so there's this thing like, if you have only one line, like line series, then you only have one like y value, like unit. And um, then it's like plain wrong to have two y axes. So like that should not be a thing. And sort of like this, these considerations sort of root in a shift in the objective of this library is that before I was just like, let's help people make some plots. Well, now it's like, let's help make people make great plots. And um, that seems to be a general trend from what I can hear of like Greg's talk. <laughs> um, but okay, so like an obviously following question here is like, what is a great talk? Uh, or like, what is a great plot? <laughs> um, and should Evan and I really be the ones to decide that? Um, 
I'd go for no. Uh, luckily, someone else kind of like worked a lot with that. He's a guy called Edward Tufty, which I think was also mentioned earlier. And uh, he's like the king of plots. <laughs> and uh, I know this is a princess hat, but um, gender is lame and this hat is just objectively better. So, uh, <laughs> uh, But the reason why he has this stage is because he did like a lot of cool uh, redesigns of traditional plots. And just the, generally a lot of thinking about the art of visualization. In, and uh, he sort of works with this idea of like graphical excellence being that which gives the viewer the most ideas in like the shortest amount of time, the sh least amount of ink, the ink in the smallest space. And I think this goes very much in line with like the idea of Elm in general, that sort of like use simplicity to yield clearer communication. And so we go for that, and um, we sort of built this API around his ideas and sort of, like, we can't make everyone make, like, tufty plots, but we can, like, prevent you from making, like, plain wrong plots and sort of make it easier for you to make, like, great plots. And, um, but, like, the observant listener will recognize that we sort of have to know some of the same problem as we did in the very first API regarding default configurations. Like, surely some of this could be defaulted away. And like this is a problem for me, but like it's like not like <laughs> you can it, you can make like helper functions, which is like you can just give ask the user to just put in like one piece of the configuration, and then we'll have a default like under the hood, and you can just that way you can make like gradual, um, increasingly difficult configurations, which is cool because when you get to the end like just completely free with customization, then you can just show an example of how the previous um, helper functions made it, and then people will be like, oh, I know this, like you can just, I just need to change this bit, which is nice because it gives a nice learning curve as well. And um, so I'm like pretty happy with this, although we only ever go like through the series um, API and like, the bar charts are like just dropped completely. It's just, like not dealing with that. And I'm like, I really want to get this out because I've been working on it for like months now. And um, so I just, I have to rewrite the whole thing. And I'm just, the bar chart, I'll like, I'm just making like an implementation that's like, okay, it works. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to ship it because at least people will have nice things, like some of the nice things. And later, I'm like, I'm talking to Evan in like another context or something, and he like mentions the bar chart and how it's like not overwhelmingly great. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, like he's, I'm explaining how like, okay, I really wanted it out and like, I'll fix it in the next version. And he's like, yeah, makes sense, but his eyes. <laughs> His eyes, they're not mad, they're just disappointed, you know? <laughs> and so, like, I'm crumbling up in regret, not because I made Evan sad, but because I, like, I had betrayed myself and what I believe in, you know? Like, I know in my heart that, like, taking the time to do things right is, like, the better way to make software. And I sort of, like, bend to, like, an imaginary pressure of like a community of like they really need this plotting, like nobody really needs that much plotting anyways. And <laughs> so I'm this was like actually that was probably one of the most important things that I learned in in during the Gallon plot was sort of like the the sol solidifying of this integrity within me. So uh, which is why it's like underlined bald, italic and colored. Uh, <laughs> Because it really makes a difference for like the quality of the package that we have in this community, and it's sort of like it would be great if like I think personally it would be great if we like in a few years people would be like, so what's up with the Elm community, and someone else will be like, oh yeah, those are the people who take the time to do things right, and like <laughs> like I would want to be part of that, and like so that's that's like what I'm aiming for. So just so like. It's done when it's done right. So, 
Uh, and speaking of visions, uh, the future. I don't know why it's funny when that quote it just is. <laughs> um, so my plan is sort of to like crush D3. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but like, I started to like, I, I got pretty like fascinated with this like Tufty dude, so I was like, better read everything he's ever written. And uh, yeah, you have to focus on the books, but like what kind of post-millennium would I be if I didn't put a selfie in my presentation? <laughs> um, but yeah, what's cool about these books is not exactly like, okay, the plots are also cool, but it's more like the design process that he takes you through. And he sort of has this arrogance to like question the assumptions that we found, like the way we talk and think about plots. And the way he designs things, he just kind of looks at something, which is important when aiming for simplicity, is like, do we really need this thing? And the question is always, like, sometimes no, and that's great. Um, but also, like, the objectivity to see, okay, does this actually improve um, the plot that we're dealing with in this case? And so another thing that I think is really cool, which is just like a side thought, is that you know how like Elm has like 40 years of research and like functional programming like embedded in it, and that means that I don't have to worry about making like wrong code because like all I care about is making a plotting library, and and so in the same way I can take all this knowledge that I get from these books and like embed it in the API so that people who don't actually care about plotting but have this cool data set, they can just like use the plotting library and be like, now we have a great plot and don't have to worry about that. And then they can share their knowledge and then we're all like building on top of each other and it's just like a beautiful thought. I think it's just like the essence of computer science, so, like it's the science of information, which is just great. Programming is great. <laughs> um, on a more concrete level, though, then I did redesign like the bars API, and it's f and I with this new critical eye, like I'm sort of very aware of how our natural languages like trick us into like particular designs. Like these two are both called like bar charts, but like they literally have nothing in common except bars, <laughs> and like all the like axes, everything else is different, and the things that are not. That are different are also like something that's that they share that they share is also something they share with like line series, for example. So like they should just not be together. And so I put them together now, everything's much better. And I also made like heat maps, which is for a project which I don't have time to talk about, but you should ask me about that later. <laughs> um, because I have to give thanks now. Uh, <laughs>